today I will be talking about the neurotransmitter PND number two. Just a disclaimer, so pause the video and just read that. The question states, explain how two neurotransmitters affect human behavior. Use key studies to support your response. The command term means give a detailed account including reasons or causes and you have to look at the question carefully because it says use key studies and it is plural. This will be in eight mark form. So because it says explain how to neurotransmitters, not the studies, I included a whole introductory paragraph about how neurotransmission works. So basically you have to introduce neurotransmitters, define them and state their location and then mention action potentials because that's how it actually occurs. And what happens when neurotransmitters are emitted into the synapse, elaborate upon that and then add a link sentence to go to your key study. So basically, neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that pass messages across the synaptic cleft from a presynaptic neuron to the receptors on a postsynaptic neuron. They are located in terminal vesicles at the end of the axon, and an action potential may be triggered down the axon, and this is the process of neurotransmission. When neurotransmitters are emitted into the synapse, they can affect human behavior, and this is linking back to the sentence, the, the question. When receptors are blocked or the amount of neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft is altered, this can cause increased or decreased levels of behavior. Acetylcholine and serotonin are two examples of neurotransmitters. Then I go on to my study, and that is Martinez and Kesner, which um, talks about acetylcholine. So basically, you have to have a topic sentence, and mine is, Acetylcholine plays a role in memory formation in the hippocampus, demonstrated by Martinez and Kessner in 1991. The aim of Martinez and Kessner was to investigate the role that acetylcholine had on memory formation. And the independent variable was the level of acetylcholine, which was op operationalized by the drug scopolamine and physostigmine. The dependent variable what was measured was the time the rats had taken to complete the maze. The method they used was they placed rats in a maze with a food reward at the end and they individually had to complete the maze and time was recorded for each rat. Then they were split into three groups. Group 1 was injected with scopolamine, group 2 was injected with physostigmine and group 3 was the control group which had no injections or amendments. So scopolamine blocks acetylcholine receptors, which therefore decreases the levels of acetylcholine in the synapse. Um, physostigmine blocks cholinesterase, which prevents the cleanup of acetylcholine, and then that therefore increases levels of acetylcholine in the synapse. And with these drugs, they all completed the maze again, and time was recorded. The results showed that group 1 completed the maze the slowest with the most errors, which was the scopolamine group. Group 2 completed it fastest with the least errors, which was physostigmine group, and the control group completed in between times of group 1 and 2. So they concluded that scopolamine reduced levels of acetylcholine, which had a negative effect on memory formation. Physostigmine increased levels of acetylcholine, which had a positive effect on memory formation, and therefore acetylcholine is an important neurotransmitter in memory formation. And you have to mention because this experiment had participants of rats, even though the experiment was conducted on animals, it provides insight into human behavior, and if it's possible, link to a human study that relates to it. So mine was Squire, 1987, low concentration of acetylcholine are found in people with Alzheimer's disease. You have to show this because it shows causation. <clears throat> and just my linking sentence is, this, this study provided evidence that acetylcholine played an important role in memory formation in the hippocampus, which changes the way that human behaves, again relating back to the question. Thus, this neurotransmitter caused an increase in memory formation with higher amounts of acetylcholine in comparison to low levels of acetylcholine. And then just a concluding sentence, humans are likely to be more forgetful with low levels of acetylcholine and longer term effects may result in serious episodic problems, for example, eventually forgetting where they live, etc. 
Now, my second key study, because it does say support and um, provide at least two, is Kazumatsu in Harai, a Japanese study, and it's about serotonin. <clears throat> So basically, my topic sentence is, serotonin is another neurotransmitter which is responsible for the regulation of mood, sleep, and arousal levels. And my aim was, Kazumatsu in Harai aimed to investigate the effect of sensory depri deprivation on behavior. The method they used was, they studied a group of Buddhist monks on a 72-hour pilgrimage, and they took blood samples of the monks before the monks ascended a mountain and after. And basically there was conditions which the monks had to abide by. They could not eat, could not drink, could not speak, and they were exposed to cold temperatures. Um, the results were that blood tests taken after monks started hallucinating visions of their ancestors. Approximately 48 hours climbing indicated increased levels of blood serotonin. And the conclusion was it provided evidence that serotonin affects human behavior and sensory deprivation triggered increased release of serotonin, which overactivated the hypothalamus and frontal cortex, resulting in hallucinations. And just a concluding sentence, this may have affected behavior in terms of sleep, emotion and vision. If you remember, they are the part, they are examples of what the serotonin is responsible for. And just a little conclusion, concluding sentence. So why do neurotransmitters affect human behavior? You have to state what both key studies indicated that support the question. And this concludes. So my little conclusion was, neurotransmitters affect human behavior because increased or decreased levels can change the way the body behaves. Both key studies indicated that neurotransmitters cause a change in human behavior. And this concludes that neurotransmitters affect behavior by altering our actions and how we respond to certain stimuli. When you are actually writing down the essay and exam conditions, during this first new transmission um, introductory paragraph, please always remember to go and define your abbreviation. So you can go in your transmitters and T's. You always have to define your abbreviation before using it. And that's basically all. So that was just a covering of an eight mark question related to PNB number two. And that's how I should look out look like when it's full. Mine was 586 words. And hope that helped. Thanks.